Hi, fellow sewists. It's Roxanne here at Make It Just Sew. Today, I'm giving you guys a video on tips I've used to cover jewelry displays. So, a little backstory here. My father uh, is a jeweler. He's a goldsmith and makes fine jewelry. Uh, my parents own a jewelry store, and occasionally the jewelry displays will just get beat up and need to be replaced. And in the last time my mom was ordering new uh, displays, she was beginning to notice that they just weren't lasting as long and the quality had really gone down. Mostly the quality of the fabric that was being used to upholster these jewelry displays. So I thought I could lend her a hand because the displays were in perfectly good shape. Like a piece of furniture, you can recover it. It just depends on the fabric you choose that determines how long lasting and easy care they're going to be. So I thought I would share with you this little non-sewing make for all of my crafty fellow sewists. And here we go. So here's what I'm talking about. This is a before picture. Here is a jewelry display. As you can see, it's flaking. Now I've already removed this circle, so normally you wouldn't see that. But you can see that it's just looking kind of beat up. It's seen better days. And this fabric, fabric if I rub it, it will chip off and leave flakes of this off-white, like phone, fake leather everywhere so it's really just a terrible mess okay it's seen better days it's done so what i've done first of all i removed this top neck cover that's just a bunch of glue that's all oxidized and i've done something creative with it rather than cover it detailed piece by detailed curved piece you know the main purpose is to have a nice clear display area here for jewelry so I've done, I don't know if you've been to a cocktail uh, party lately, but a lot of caterers and party event planners have started to use these interesting knit fabric tablecloths on the cocktail tabletops. And they just look like a giant stretchy piece of fabric was pulled over shower cap style and then secured somehow at the bottom of the table. And it just kind of stretches over the tabletop and then tapers down to the bottom and gets the job done, looks really sleek. Well, I kind of use that as inspiration. Now, the hardest part of this whole thing was sourcing the fabric. I had to find something that was the right color for the decor and theme at the jewelry store. It had to be uh, pretty, like a nice, smooth, non-distracting knit because we need stretch. We need the stretch in it for what I'm about to do. Couldn't be a woven. Also, it really couldn't be a thick or, um, you know, faux leather because a lot of faux leathers don't stretch. And if they're too thick, you're going to have a lot of problems folding around all these curved edges. It will be bulky. It won't want to bend. It will involve a lot of cutting and making little snips. And so finding the right fabric was key and took some work. I ended up finding this lovely off-white um it's like a microfiber knit stretch suede it has just the right amount of opacity and body it's beautiful drape and stretch so once i found that it was showtime so what i did was i took my display and i set it down upside down after i took off obviously this part i set it down upside down and I pulled my fabric up and around it. Kind of like if you were to shrink wrap an Easter basket or something to that effect, or really just wrap fabric around it. And what I ended up with was discovering that it took about a 14 inch square to be the right amount for this display, okay? Literally just wanted to wrap it, pull it snugly and make like a ponytail of fabric back here out of sight, kind of behind in the most, in the least conspicuous spot possible of this display, which wouldn't be on display, which is the back. <laughs> okay. And I want to make sure I grab all the fabric. So that means if I see like a loose spot, I'm going to pull it up and make it very snug. I'm going to go around the entire thing. See how this, oops, didn't catch, didn't catch, got to pull it up. And that may involve shifting. I may have I may need to pull the whole thing or turn the points over and do it diamond shaped like such, okay? And try again until you get it 
all pulled to the back and you can see your shape of your neck emerging in the front, okay? I want a smooth finish with no little uh, wrinkles on the display, on the business side of this display, okay? And once I've got it really pulled snug, you could take a rubber band and just like a ponytail, wrap it around to secure it, okay? So what you want to do is inspect from the front. You want this to be perfectly smooth all around and snug, okay? You want it to be just smooth as possible, no wrinkles ideally around any of this part. Once you've got your ponytail nice and snug in the back, you're going to take a needle and thread. I found to be easiest was a really long, like dull upholstery needle. It was probably two and a half to three inches. I can show you. This one here and you have to find the right blend of you can see I bent it because this fabric can be really spongy and hard to poke through uh, but I really needed a sharp point with a firm long needle to do this and what you're gonna do once you've got your rubber band securing this whole thing right here is you're going to want to sew through your folds okay just kind of sew all the way around and pull I you doubled up using like button uh, or upholstery thread, a really heavy duty thread. And you're going to sew around the circle with the rubber band still in two or three times and secure it really well with a knot. Once you've got, once you've gone through two or three times, you want to get all the little wrinkles so you don't let any, if you don't secure all the, every single one of these little ridges, you're going to get one that's going to pop and you're going to get a saggy spot. Okay. That's a bit exaggerated, but that's how it'll look if you, need to pull it and if you go around once and you see that something was loose like in a certain spot you can pull it up and catch it on the next go round. okay so that's why we're doing it three times it takes some work if you pull too hard you're going to break your threads if you don't pull hard enough you're not going to get this snug as you and small as possible and you really want it the whole your goal is for it to be as small as possible the size of the amount the rubber band is holding so for me that would be somewhere between uh let's see i could twist it and show you here uh just under an inch in diameter the circle that is the size of the rubber band gripping all this fabric once you've gotten to that stage you're going to have what looks like a little one inch hole and a bunch of fabric poofed out from it and what i've done you can't see here. Let's see if I can peel this back a little. No. All right. What I've done is tucked all the fabric in. So you could take the back of a pen. So just something blunt. I, I think I was even using the capped end of a seam ripper or tool like this to push all the fabric into the hole. It just takes a little bit of patience. Don't be too aggressive because you're going to pop your stitches that you've just put around your circle. But eventually you could tuck all that fabric into this dead space because in here, remember, it's nothing but empty space on either side of this support post. So you're just going to be tucking that fabric to the left and the right of that pole through the hole. And once you've gotten to that stage, you're going to have just this little gathered circle with the hole opening. And I thought what better than to just cover that up. I've seen this done, I can't tell you where, but I just got the idea to take a piece of like cardstock. here I used an index card, cut it to the right size to cover that hole, which is just over an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter. I sprayed it with a little bit of adhesive, like spray adhesive, what I'm using is this. It comes in different brands, but I found Aline's Tacky Sorry guys, Aline's tacky spray to be pretty reliable and um, it works well. Just pointer, pro tip, make sure you use this in a well ventilated area. It does have a little bit of fumes, kind of a la rubber cement smell. And you wanna put a big piece of paper down, like news, newspaper You know, can rub off the ink. So I use an old desktop calendar sheet and place that down and curve it up when I spray because it oversprays and it won't go away. It really is messy and uh, you wanna contain that mess. Also, once you've used your spray bottle and you go to open it again, one thing you're gonna notice is that you're gonna get that lovely stuff that sticks, okay, around your spray nozzle. Try to clean that as best 
as you can, but what that's going to do, despite your best efforts, like me, if it happens to you the way it happened to me, is that it's not going to spray straight. So have a giant piece of paper behind your teeny weeny project that you're trying to spray because it's going to spray in a direction. It could spray off, you know, off that sheet if you use just like a eight and a half by 11 piece. I've learned the hard way. So once you've done that, you're going to spray two things, your little circle, you know, that we're going to use here and your big circle just the back of it, okay? You wanna get that all sprayed up. And once you've done that, you can carefully pick it up and set it onto your pre-cut pieces of fabric. So you're gonna have a small circle that's, you wanna make it about a half inch, three eighths to a half inch bigger than your what you're trying to cover. And same thing for this. I've covered that maybe with three quarters of an inch to an inch bigger than what I'm trying to cover. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. Once you have your sprayed item, you set it on top. Now the back side is going to be sticky on both of these and you start pulling the fabric in and it will stick, it will hold it for you, which is why we're not using wet glue at this point. We're gonna use spray so it holds it for us. We're gonna do it from both sides and then we're gonna do it from the opposite sides. So you get all four corners pulled in and then you're gonna work your magic and do the eighths these other corners and pull and pull and pull and smooth it out until it looks like this. Okay. Just takes a little bit of finessing to have it nice and smooth with no big ridges around the circle. You're going to do the same thing on the piece of paper or cardstock. Okay. And what you're going to have when you're done or something that looks like this. Okay. It's not perfect, but it definitely, you know, is good enough to get you started to the point where we can go ahead and use glue. We're gonna use glue. Again, I like Aline's tacky glue this time in the glue form. And I'm going to use a popsicle stick. I'm going to get a little bit of glue. I actually just unscrew the lid, scrape some onto my popsicle stick and just smear it on where I need it, like butter, slather it on, get it all the way to the edges, a nice, coating not so much that it oozes out when you put it on but enough that it can saturate the fabric and cover all these ridges okay same thing here and I'm going to set that aside and place them where they need to go so starting here and just hold it until it grabs okay and it covers up that hole beautifully and same thing here once you've got this covered with your fabric then you set that on top, make sure your placement is accurate, look at it from the front, back and sides, shift it forward if you need to, and let it dry and you're done. It works out, I mean, you can see this finished product, okay? You can see there's a little loose spot there, but it's kind of out of sight, so it's not terrible. We can just tuck that back. It's definitely not gonna show when it's displayed. And it looks beautiful in the case, it's easy care, you know, it saved the displays because the ones she was ordering, sorry about the contrast guys, it was really hard to capture off white against black, but you get the picture improved, much improved. And I thought I would share that with you. So have a great day, comment below on any questions you have. Do you like artsy craftsy projects too? Are you just good with your hands and you can't help yourself? Uh, then, you know, comment and give me ideas for videos. If you have any questions, let me know. Bye, and I'll see you at the next video.